sorry, that would that's for a Democrat show. Let me know when you're ready. No matter what the technical difficulty is, this man is a professional. He goes all the way. To- what you represent to them is freedom. Was an extremely great conservative commentator. We're tearing it up on Wednesday night. This is awesome. This will allow me to retort. Well, this is Jersey Joe for uh, the Reverb Comic Sense Show. 8 p.m. on shrmedia.com. Actually, I just totally screwed up. This show contains language that some viewers may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. And now on to the show. And welcome to the Reverb Common Sense. I am your host, Jersey Joe. And I'm trying to make sense out of the senseless. The Jersey Takeover is here. We have expanded to two hours every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to support the show or just get some kick-ass t-shirts... Go to reverb.one backslash shop. Or you can just go to reverb.one, click on the shop button. You know, you know how to go through web pages. I don't think I have to walk you step by step. <clears throat> go ahead, check them out. Check out those five old bracelets, um, the pocket constitutions, everything. <clears throat> uh Making a joke. Uh, friend of mine was being smart as someone asked. He is flying up. Uh, I think it's to Wisconsin. And I was like, oh, who are you going to see? And he put, none of your damn business. So I put, oh, wait a minute. None of your damn business. Do I know him? Have I heard of him before? Name sounds familiar. Oh, uh, so. How's everybody doing? Um. I can't let some information out, but I'm going to tell you this. I feel a lot better about this election right now. I feel a lot better. So, uh, if you're worried about the election, make sure you get out and vote. And I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. Nope, 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 nope. But get out and vote. Just think of Supreme Court. Um, so, uh, we're going to get into a lot of stuff today, and, um, the hell? a 14 pound lobster has been caught near B- Bermuda after Hurricane Nicole. <laughs> Damn. Damn. That's a big lobster. It's I'm seeing some what looks to be some fake um, emails popping up now. And you kind of tell which, you know, when someone's bringing up a making a fake email. I'll call out the ones I think are fake, but so far WikiLeaks... Psh- They've had 100% since the day they started. And now, after they start releasing on Democrats, Democrats were cheering when they were releasing the Bush files. It's... Now, all of a sudden, it's all they're fake. They just throw out blatant, uh, wide-ranging comments to try to discredit. And now we have Biden making threats again. Holy shit. This this administration, Democrats want to go back to the Cold War, I guess. They're just trying to go back to the Cold War. Uh, Biden was out threatening Russia again. And and 
I'm getting tired of it. Russia, 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 Russia is interfering. Russia is in. No, they had to come up with excuses and divert from how illegal the DNC has been. And oh, I'm gonna, I, I'm debating still. And you know, I always talk about everything that goes on with the show. There is a video. Uh, Verteus, I keep messing up the name. I keep messing up the name. But the uh, the the organization that went under, undercover with the Planned Parenthood. Well, they went undercover with the DNC. I want to get the name of this, make sure I do it right. Let me see. There he is. There he is. There you go. Um, well, they got a 16-minute video where they were undercover talking to... Um, Various DNC uh, contractors. It's all explained in the video. And um, they talk about how they've instigated the violence at all the Trump rallies. All the incidents that happened. That was their work. One of the guys has now been fired. Um, I kind of laugh. I'm sorry, but. Um, he has been fired. It, it, it real quick, boom. I, I think he walked away because he understands he's got a. The hell? They got to. Um, hang on, I got to get it off Fox. Uh, he, he talks about everything he does and how he how they go around um communicating between the super PACs and the campaigns, which is illegal. They talk about how they do that. This man, I, I think he. Between being, they, they're saying he's fired just so they could try to save face to, um, you know, he's, uh, he, he's, he just walks away. He'll be back. They'll have him back within the fold in no time. But it's there's a lot of information. They admit that they are the ones that started everything at the Trump rallies. Um, they even faked some violence. Some guy got arrested. There's this elderly woman that's like COPD needs oxygen to breathe, and supposedly she was assaulted by a Trump supporter. Well, ends up that the guy had his back to her. She taps him on the shoulder. He turns around. She drops on the ground, screams, he hit me. And they talk about how they hire mentally ill people to make sure that issues are started. They hire homeless people to instigate stuff. This is really disgusting stuff that the DNC is a part of. And yeah, I think I'm actually going to play the whole thing in its entirety. I don't want to be piecing it together. You can also go to Reaver.1. Unfortunately, I had to piece it. Um, the site, my... The, the, the website that I deal with. Um, but let me post the whole thing up. Now, I could have just linked to YouTube. I didn't want to do that. 
I'm not trying to take credit for anybody's work. I give full credit to uh, for Terrace, for hey, whatever. Um, YouTube will take it down soon. They'll take it down to protect the Democrats. They've done it plenty of times. So I put it up on my site where I have control of it so that YouTube can't be taking it down. And it's like I said, I'm not trying to take uh, credit for anybody else's work. I want to make sure their work is being able to be seen, that it can't be silenced so easy. I think after the first break, I'll play that. It's... It's getting absolutely ridiculous. And they say in it, they don't worry about the Republicans doing it because they know the Republicans follow the rules. They don't. They admit it. They admit that they break the rules however and whenever they can. And they don't care. That is rules for radicals. That is the Alinsky style politics. It's absolutely, uh, it's mind numbing. Um, We need to do stuff to. We need to start making sure that everybody's on a level playing field. Because Democrats have been running, doing whatever the hell they want to get elected. And nobody's been stepping up. Uh, they think just because they deny it. And there's an article. Let's see if I, I'm. And it pissed me off. Howard Dean sitting here, well, well, uh, the quid pro quo documents are, are uh, they're fake. And he's trying to talk about that they're f- hacked and they're faked. Problem is, they're straight from the FBI, you dumbass. And he just goes on and on, denying it. And, oh, no, uh, she hasn't been convicted or charged of any crimes and all these scandals. It's just a right-wing conspiracy. It's been going on 30 years. You know what? I'm getting tired of that. Well, she's never been convicted. And I hear the same talking points. That's how I know you're a fucking paid troll. When you start talking these talking points and repeating and parroting, well, understand this. It's very simple. There is murderers. There are serial murderers that are walking the street. They're not innocent. But just because they haven't been convicted yet doesn't mean that they're not murderers. Just because Hillary hasn't been convicted yet doesn't mean she's not a criminal. And you now have an uprising in the FBI. And the FBI agents are starting to um, release documents. And a lot of them said they were going to do it. And they're pissed because they said Comey blocked every step of the way. So we got an uprising in the FBI. This whole thing made them look like to be incompetent. And Democrats are running out there, well, she hasn't been convicted yet, she hasn't been convicted yet. But Donald Trump's never been convicted of sexual assault. But you are believing everything that's said about him without much proof. Sorry, accusations are not proof.
It, it, it's it's amazing the double standards that the Democrats have. Just because Hillary has not been convicted yet. Oh, and the best one I heard is when we got talking about uh, Bill Clinton on one of them. Well, he was impeached. That doesn't mean nothing. That's just an accusation. You don't get impeached easily. It's not an easy process. These people that are blindly. And I really don't think it's American, uh, like, citizens, just actual supporters. These are paid parents because the talking points are too dead on. They're too dead on. And it's funny because this Howard Dean interview, I mean, he's just a stuttering, blithering idiot. This sounds like nothing. Who's saying this? This, that, this is nothing. This, this, this is the last batch. A couple of batches of emails have revealed exactly nothing. Now who is pushing this notion that there was a quid pro quo at the State Department? And I was responded, this is somebody made this up. This is innuendo leaked by the Russians for their own political. And then the anchor interrupted said, this is not WikiLeaks. This is an unnamed FBI official who made these documents alleging that Patrick Kennedy of wrongdoing and that just kind of shut him up and sent him on a backtrack because they just uh, we had Biden they are trying this administration is trying to start a war with Russia and I've talked to people about this whole Russia thing and all of them agree with Trump Why make an enemy? It doesn't mean we have to stop trying to uh, change what Russia does. But doesn't mean we have to be their enemies. Being respectful of each other, being um, friendly towards each other is not a bad thing with Russia. This trying to piss them off at every turn. Accuse him of everything, and now Biden's out there again for the second time in less than a week, threatening that we are going to be retaliating against Russia. That's not good. They are trying to start a war with Russia. And that scares me. That scares me. They are so set they just want a war with Russia. How many how many people are gonna die from that? As I'm doing the show, I'm also messing around with the equipment. Going to try to get the live stream back up and running. It's. We got a hard road that we're going to be going down. And it scares me that no matter who is president, the new one, we're in trouble. Because this administration is pissing so many people off. It's not going to be a good thing. It's... The only thing they could do is scream conspiracy theory. And that's the problem. That's all Democrats do anymore. Conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory. 
You go to the well one too many times, you look like an idiot. It's... It's, uh, the American people are waking up to all this bullshit. And they see Hillary for what she is. And they talk about a down-ballot voting because of Trump. I don't think you're going to have a, a, a issue down-ballot. But Hillary, I think, is going to cause issues down-ballot because they are showing that they're willing to back a criminal, that they're going to overlook a lot of negatives. I am. And for those that don't know, the quid pro quo with the whole Hillary thing is, um, there was basically bribes being offered on to change the classification of these emails. Hillary's uh, personnel knew they were classified and tried bribing to get the classification taken away. And it was, uh, hey, you scratch our back, we'll scratch yours, type deal. And it doesn't... Uh, And according to the documents, the FBI official pressured the individual to downgrade the classification of the email to unclassified in exchange for State Department reciprocating by allowing the FBI to place more agents in countries where they are presently forbidden. But of course, um, they're trying to make it sound like this is all Donald Trump and it has nothing to do with Donald Trump. They're deflecting. They're trying to blame Russia. They're trying to blame everybody. These are DNC. These are John Podesta's emails. This is nobody else. This is their stuff. They're trying to deflect off the issues and the issues is this is their mess. Nobody else's. This is what the Clinton campaign is about. This is what the Democratic Party has become. And I hear so many times people are leaving the Democrat Party because that is not the party that they joined. It is not about the party of the people anymore. We can get into a discussion on whether they ever... This is not what they talk people to joining the Democrat Party. They are nothing like the party that they used to be. In the last eight years, that party has transformed majorly. It is nowhere near what they were. And a lot of people have noticed and a lot of people have run screaming in fear. You're listening to the Reaver of Common Sense right here on SHR Media, High Plains Pundit Radio, ICRN Network, Red Nation Rising Radio, YouTube, Spreaker, and iTunes. We will be right back. Now, for Amels, we know you may have only one shop to harvest that trophy, so we have thousands of accessories and replacement parts to improve your chances. We know how much you love to shoot, so our gunsmiths' articles and videos will help you do more and get more out of your guns. We also value your hard work and money. That's why only Brownells backs up everything we sell with a 100% unconditional lifetime guarantee. Brownells, the world's largest supplier of firearm accessories and gunsmithing tools. 
breaking news. According to the latest report coming out of SHR Media, a merchandise store to support both the Reaver of Common Sense and SHR Media has just been unleashed to the general public. Be forewarned that this site can be contagious and numerous items can be purchased to support the best news programming. Go to Reaver.one website and click on the store link to check out the merchandise. We were at Common Sense, hosted by my dad, Jersey Joe. Beware, the Jersey Takeover is here. Every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Center Time, you can catch the Reaver of Common Sense show, hosted by Jersey Joe. Right here on shrmedia.com and hyphensdailynews.com. Only Jersey can deliver hell like no one else. So consider this your fair warning. In a world controlled by corrupt politicians. You got a business. That You didn't build that. A team of ordinary men emerge from the ashes to give voice to the voiceless and hope to the hopeless. Sackhead Sean. Dude, I'm not saying cops are stupid, bro. Sackhead Clint. All good friends of ours usually show, show up drunk. drunk. Also starring Sako as the producer. I'm a little bit drunk, I'm a little bit drunk, cause I'm drinking, drinking, drinking. They are the Sackheads Radio Show. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific on shrmedia.com. Every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can catch the Southside Mud Show with its host, the Jersey Boys, Jersey Joe and Crash, right here on SHR Media and High Plains Pundit Radio, where we will be digging up the dirt. Times are dark. The people misled by corrupt politicians, lied to by establishment media, and deceived by the false messages of Islam. A nation in confusion needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, High Plains Talk Radio, live rebooting Liberty, and YouTube for a unique brand of commentary on the unpleasant blind guy. Because truth is not always pleasant. If you miss a show, don't worry. You can catch the replays two ways, RebootingLiberty.com or the ReverbCommonSense.com. While you're there on Reverb Common Sense, don't forget, drop in your email and keep up to date on everything going on, or click the like button on the Facebook widget. Now on to the Reaver of Common Sense. This show contains language that some viewers may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. And now on to the show. And welcome back to the Reaver of Common Sense. I am your host, Jersey Joe, and I'm trying to make sense out of the senseless. The Jersey Takeover is here. We have expanded to two hours every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to support the show, support SHR Media, go to Reaver.one backslash shop that is r-e-a-v-e-r dot o-n-e backslash s-h-o-p all right we are going to get into uh this undercover work this uh exposure of the black ops of the democrat party 
it, it's it, it, it I'm not doing this for radio purposes this just scared the shit out of me that they're willing to do this stuff go this far it, it's It's scary. All right, let's start it. It doesn't matter what the freaking legal and ethics people say. We're, we need to win this motherfucker. Hillary like is aware of all the work that you guys do. I hope. The campaign is fully in. And then they tell Hillary like what's going on. Well, I mean Hillary knows who Jane. Yeah. I'm not suggesting we wait around. We need to start this shit right away. Okay. On every one of these trucks. Okay. What I call this conflict engagement. Mm -hmm. That's that's your that's your version of reenfranchisement. Conflict engagement. This guy's Scott. Uh, We're starting anarchy here. This is part one of our undercover investigation into the dark backroom dealings of the Hillary. Real quick, that's the scary part. This is only part one. This is only the first video. And it, it, holy. Clinton presidential campaign. The culmination of a year-long investigation infiltrating the machine from the bottom all the way to the White House. There are concerns this election will be rigged. What you're about to see will make you uncomfortable and angry. It's graphic, uncensored, and disturbing. Our attorneys say... There is strong evidence of criminality. And this is just part one. A lot of free union guys? They'll do whatever. Oh, yeah. You want. Yeah. They're rock and roll. So I'm basically deputy rapid response director for the DNC for all things Trump on the ground. Nobody's really supposed to know about me. <laughs> no, I'm saying, we have mentally ill people, mm. but we pay to do shit. Make no mistake. This guy named Cesar Vargas is his name. I got a priest to cry on camera once. You know, Brad and Bob and Lux and myself are all part of the old school method where it doesn't matter what the freaking legal and ethics people say. We need to win this motherfucker. Um, So Bob is really good friends with him and talked to him this afternoon. And they are all in. If we can get 25 grand, they're all in. There is a narrative that supporters at Trump rallies are violent and dangerous, looking to beat up protesters who don't agree with them. But our undercover investigation into the Hillary Clinton Democratic Party machine reveals a very different story. If you're there and you're protesting and you do these actions, mm-hmm. you will be attacked at Trump rallies. That's what we know. Oh, so, oh, oh, so that's part of the process so of, get, of the eliciting the reaction. The whole point okay. of it is we know that Trump's people will, will freak the fuck out. The security team will freak out and his supporters will lose their shit. This is Scott Fovel. He is the national field director for Americans United for Change. He used to work for People for the American Way, an organization. This is the gentleman that was, quote-unquote, fired. He has been released of his duties, but it doubt it's stopping anything. ...organization funded by George Soros. He also has his own company called the Fovel Group. He is one of the dark operatives for the Clinton campaign. We were contracted directly with the DNC and the campaign, both. Yeah. I am contracted to him, mm-hmm. but my, I answer to the head of special events for the DNC mm-hmm. and the head of the special events and political for the campaign. The campaign pays DNC, DNC pays Democracy Partners, Democracy Partners pays the Fogel Group, the Fogel Group goes and executes the shit on the ground. Democracy Partners is a private political consulting company with deep ties to Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama's White House, and the Democratic National Committee. We are the primary mechanism. As a team, Democracy Partners is the, the tip of the spear. Up. Wherever Trump and Pence are going to be, we have a bench. Okay. And we have a whole team across the country that does that. Both consultants and people from the Democratic Party and the Democratic Party apparatus and people from the uh, campaign, the Clinton campaign. Um, and uh, you know, my role with the campaign is to manage all that. Bob Creamer is Democracy Partners. 
He is the husband of Jan Schakowsky, a Democratic congresswoman from Chicago. And in 2005, he pled guilty to tax violations and bank fraud. He was convicted and sentenced to five months in prison and 11 months of house arrest. He founded Democracy Partners in 2011. Just for a little orientation, uh, Democracy Partners is kind of a group practice of a variety of consultants that um, do essentially a wide variety of different kinds of political consulting. Uh, I work with Bob Kramer one to one all the time. I'm the white hat. Democracy Partners is kind of the dark hat. Bob Kramer is diabolical. And I love him for it. Yeah. This investigation has revealed compelling evidence of a dark money conspiracy, a violation of federal campaign coordination laws between Hillary Clinton's campaign, Priorities USA, Hillary's Super PAC, and the Democratic National Committee. We have a clip deliverable that we have to deliver every day uh -huh. for our groups of clients who are involved in these projects. AUFC, uh -huh. uh, A4C, which is Alliance for uh, Change, um, Alliance for Retired Americans, which is part of AFL-CIO. Mm -hmm. They're one of our partners on, on the AUFC stuff, and for social security. Depends on the issue. And then there's, there's the DNC and the campaigns mm -hmm. and priorities. Priorities is a big part of this, too. Mm -hmm. The campaigns and DNC cannot coordinate with priorities, mm -hmm. but I guarantee to you that the people who run the super PACs all talk to each other, and... We and a few other people are the hubs of that communication. Like, so you're kind of like um, intermediaries between the super PACs and the DNC. But they can't, the DNC, they can't talk to each other. Okay. But you guys are kind of like... We're consultants, so we're not the official entity. Mm -hmm. And so those conversations can be had between consultants who are working for different parts. Yeah. Okay. That's why there's, that's why there's Bob who's the primary there, and I'm a sub to him, mm -hmm. and I'm also primary to AUFC separately. That's why. So there's like a Morse code between the DNC and the Super PACs. It's, and it's you less of a Morse code than it is a, a, text, a text conversation that never ends. It's like that. Uh -huh. it's, kind of, it's kind of like, it's kind of like um, an ongoing Pony Express. Okay, so I mean that's it's not as efficient as it could be, but that's because the, the law doesn't allow it. The thing that we have to watch is making sure there's a double blind between the actual campaign and the actual DNC and what we're doing. There's a double blind there. No, so that. that they can plausibly deny that they knew anything about it. Scott Fovel is Kramer's attack dog. Fovel and his people train the agitators to go to Trump rallies, and nothing is left to chance. There's a script. Oh, there is a script. There's a script. Okay. There's a script of engagement. Sometimes the crazies bite, and sometimes the crazies don't bite. They're starting confrontations in the line, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? They're not starting confrontations the volunteers. in the rally, because once they're inside the rally, they're under Secret Service's control. When they're outside the rally... Mm -hmm. They're more effective out. They're harder to get in. The media will cover it no matter where it happens. I assume it's he always in the rally. Initiating the and again, sorry for interrupting this, but again, the media. They have control of the media and they know it. Conflict by having leading conversations with people who are naturally psychotic. Right. Okay, I mean, honestly, it is not hard to get some of these assholes to pop off. Right. It's, it's a matter of showing up to want to get into the rally in a Planned Parenthood t-shirt. Right. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, uh, Trump is a Nazi. You know, you can, you can message to draw them out mm -hmm. and draw them to punch you. Fovel boasts about the extent of his network of operatives. So here, you, you have a schedule of events. Mm -hmm. We update this on an ongoing, rolling basis every morning. Mm -hmm. Those are all the okay. Trump appearances. These are all the Trump and Pence appearances. Tomorrow, for instance, we are turning out... Let me replay that for you and pay close attention to what he just said. 
every morning they look. Draw them out mm -hmm. and draw them to punch you. Fovel boasts about the extent of his network of operatives. So here, you have a schedule of events. Mm -hmm. We update this on an ongoing, rolling basis every morning. Mm -hmm. Those are all the okay. Trump appearances. These are all the Trump and Pence appearances. Tomorrow, for instance, we are turning out 500 people mm -hmm. in front of the Trump International in D.C. We have to have people prepared to go wherever these events are, which means we have to have a central kind of agitator training. Yep. Now, we have a built-in group of people in New York who do this. Okay. This is exactly what we've been accusing the DNC of doing. And they've denied. They've come out with the conspiracy theory. But this is their main guys admitting that they hire paid agitators. This is it. I know it won't be, but this should be plastered all over CNN, MSNBC, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox. Every news should be playing this nonstop. Illegal activity. They're paying people to start fights. disgusting we have a built-in group of people in dc who do this i was gonna say are they are they localized we have a group of people in vegas we have a group of people in colorado we have a group of people in minneapolis so i'm basically deputy rapid response director for the dnc for all things trump on the ground this guy is aaron black he works full-time for creamer at democracy partners he directs the spontaneous protests at trump and pence events his real name is actually Aaron Minter. We don't know why he uses the name Black. Nobody's really supposed to know about me. <laughs> so the Chicago protest, when they shut all that, that was us. It was more him than me, but none okay. of this is supposed to come back to us because we want it coming from people. We don't want it to come from the party. So oh. if we do a protest and it's a oh, DNC protest, it's right away the press is going to say partisan. But if I'm in there coordinating with all the groups on the ground and sort of playing field general, but they're the ones talking to the cameras, it, it, then it's actually people. But if we send out press advisories with DNC on them and, and Clinton campaign, it just it doesn't have the same effect. We have to be really careful um, because, <laughs> because what we don't need is for it to show up on CNN that the DNC paid for X people to that's not going to happen and right there they admit that it would not turn out good if the media found out they were paying protesters well it doesn't look like the media is going to get off its ass I should say mainstream Media isn't going to get it off its ass anytime soon. So, me and I did the Chicago Trump event when we shut down the light bulbs. Yeah. Zulema Rodriguez and Aaron Black are bragging about a protest last March that turned extremely violent and led the Trump campaign to cancel a huge rally. Fights broke out between protesters and Trump supporters, and two Chicago police officers were injured. Based on our reporting, the event was not spontaneous. We have a call with the campaign every day to go over. This is Bob Kramer, founder and partner of Democracy Partners. Let me back it up a little bit. Based on our reporting, the event was not spontaneous. We have a call with the campaign every day to go over the focuses that need to be undertaken. Again, they have a call with the campaign. They have a call with the DNC campaign to go over all this every day. Every day they go over this information with the campaign. DNC. 
We met her at the Republican convention in Cleveland in July. And then, um, and then we also did the Arizona. What was the highway Yeah, really? Yeah. This Clinton dark machine is also prepared for the fallout from the violence they foment at the Trump rallies and other demonstrations. Because mm -hmm. the one thing I'm never going to do is have some kid get punched out at a rally and then not have his doctor bill and his legal bill, if he gets arrested, pay for it. Ultimately, the whole endeavor is to get negative press of Trump and his supporters in local and national media. Mm -hmm. It's something that Bob and I obsess about, is we're not going to go to an effort to just do an event and not have anybody show up or not have it covered. We have to get coverage. These guys have been doing their dirty tricks for some time, even before Trump won the nomination. So I, I probably know your work. I, I know yeah. you do. Everybody yeah. knows. But was the, um, you mean like a situation where it's sort of like a... Uh, the Iowa State Fair thing where Scott Walker grabbed the um, sign out of the dude's hand uh -huh. and then the dude gets kind of roughed up right in front of the stage, right? Yeah. On camera? Yeah. That was all us. The guy who got roughed up yeah. is, is my counterpart who works for Bob. And that, and, and that was like like um, storyboarded, that him getting roughed up or whatever? Or yeah. scenario. Uh-huh. And it, and you, so you like lent yourselves to that situation and it happened. We not it was only a self-fulfilling prophecy. We planted multiple people in that front area around him and in the back to make sure there wasn't just a action that happened up front. There was also a reaction that happened out back. Remember this woman? Her name is Shirley Teeter. She is a 69-year-old sufferer of COPD. According to numerous news stories at the time, she was assaulted at a Trump rally in North Carolina by Trump supporter Richard Campbell. The media played her story across the country for days. She was one of our activists. She was one of your activists who, who, had, been to, who had been trained up to bird dogs. Yes. So the term bird dogging, you put people in the line mm -hmm. at the front, which means they have to get there at 6 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. so they're getting the front mm -hmm. of the rally so that when Trump comes down the rope line, they're the ones asking him the question in front of the reporters mm -hmm. because they're pre-placed there. To funnel that kind of operation, you have to start back with people two weeks ahead of time and train them how to ask questions. Right. You have to train them to bird dog. No, I'm saying, we have mentally ill people mm. that we pay to do shit. Make no mistake. Over the last 20 years, I have paid off a few homeless guys to do some crazy stuff. And I've also taken them for dinner, and I've also made uh -huh. sure they had a hotel and a, and a shower, and I've put them in a program. Mm -hmm. Like, I've done that. But the, the reality is a lot of, in, especially... In and pay attention to this one because this one I don't know why this this shows how corrupt the unions still really are. In, in are you union guys? A lot of for union guys. They'll do whatever. Oh yeah. You want? Yeah. They're rock and roll. Level when up. I need to get something done in Arkansas, mm -hmm. right? The first guy I call is the head of the AFL CIO down there. Uh huh. Because he will say... Let me replay that. In Arkansas, right. the first guy I call is the head of the AFL-CIO down there. Uh -huh. Because he will say, what do you need? And I will say, I need a guy who will do this and this. And they find that guy. And that guy will be like, yeah, hell, let's do it. Bird dogging. Bird dogging. It's a word we had not heard until we got into this investigation. But when we checked the WikiLeaks Clinton emails, we found references to the term in emails to and from the campaign. This is a chain where Clinton campaign manager Robbie Mook suggests it might be a tactic to employ to shore up support with Hispanic voters. After our report, they may also need some help with the people in Iowa and Wisconsin. So I, I have to be really honest. Iowa is a difficult case because it's a 50-50 state, and honestly, half the state is racist as fuck. Mm -hmm. I 
and I came home last night and really just, I was upset because that's not the way I was raised and that's not the Iowa that I grew up in, yeah. but you kind of have to accept that that's the way it is. Now, it's not who you are, but that's what the state is. Right. Wisconsin is just as bad. Okay. I'm Hillary Clinton, and I approve this message. Corruption. As you can see, it's alive and well in our country, and you're paying for it. As we continue to release more videos, you must hold the mainstream media to account to further investigate what we've uncovered. America, our war is here. We must decide if we're going to save this country or lose it. To quote Abraham Lincoln, America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter or lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves. I know that was kind of long, but that I think is a very important um, undercover work that needs to be played as much as possible. DNC is doing whatever it wants. It's playing by its own rules. If you're willing to go that far, that tells me you're not out for the best of the country. <clears throat> this... This... Oh. It is, um, disgusting. And what's worse is how the media is ignoring it. It... it Hmm. Uh, I'm per perusing something real quick. Uh So now it seems the Democrat Party is going to try to push Michelle Obama into politics. They're going to try to get her to run either for Senate or mayor of Chicago. She'll she'll win that election most likely hands down um But we'd be looking at 2018, which means they'd have to leave um, Washington, D.C. right after they're done. I mean, I don't know um, Illinois state law. I believe Florida, to run for Senate, you have to have lived in the state for seven consecutive years uh, prior to running. Well, I don't know. I mean, it depends on the state. Um I don't know. We'll have to take a look into that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm still just... That video just gets my blood pressure going. It does. It, it pisses me off. And the mainstream media, the one that used to hold politicians responsible, now... are complacent and part of the corruption in Washington, D.C. You're listening to the Reaver of Common Sense right here on SHR Media, High Plains Pundit Radio, ICRN Network, Red Nation Rising Radio, YouTube Speaker, Spreaker, and iTunes. We will be right back.
listening to the SHR Media Network. Now, for Amels, we know you may have only one shop to harvest that trophy, so we have thousands of accessories and replacement parts to improve your chances. We know how much you love to shoot, so our gunsmiths' articles and videos will help you do more and get more out of your guns. We also value your hard work and money. That's why only Brownells backs up everything we sell with a 100% unconditional lifetime guarantee. Brownells, the world's largest supplier of firearm accessories and gunsmithing tools. Breaking news. According to the latest report coming out of SHR Media, a merchandise store to support both the Reaver of Common Sense and SHR Media has just been unleashed to the general public. Be forewarned that this site can be contagious and numerous items can be purchased to support the best news programming. Go to Reaver.one website and click on the store link to check out the merchandise. We were at Common Sense, hosted by my dad, Jersey Joe. Beware, the Jersey Takeover is here. Every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can catch the Reaver of Common Sense show, hosted by Jersey Joe. Right here on shrmedia.com and hyphensdailynews.com. Only Jersey can deliver hell like no one else. So consider this your fair warning. Wednesday night, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can catch the Southside Mutt Show with its host, the Jersey Boys, Jersey Joe and Crash, right here on SHR Media and High Plains Pundit Radio, where we will be digging up the dirt. Times are dark. The people misled by corrupt politicians, lied to by establishment media, and deceived by the false messages of Islam. A nation in confusion needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, High Plains Talk Radio, Live Rebooting Liberty, and YouTube for a unique brand of commentary on the Unpleasant Blind Guy. Because truth is not always pleasant. If you miss a show, don't worry. You can catch the replays two ways, RebootingLiberty.com or the ReverbCommonSense.com. While you're there on Reverb Common Sense, don't forget, drop in your email and keep up to date on everything going on, or click the like button on the Facebook widget. Now on to the Reverb of Common Sense. This show contains language that some viewers may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. And now on to the show. And welcome back to the Reaver of Common Sense show. I am your host, Jersey Joe, and I'm making sense out of the senseless. 
The Jersey Takeover is here. We have expanded to two hours every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to support the show and support SHR Media, go to reaver.one backslash shop. So, uh, well, it seems oh, they're not silencing. Um, um, WikiLeaks, they're still going. They're still going, and it's um, hold on one second. It's really scaring the shit out of me what's going on, politics, everything. Um, the Democrat Party, it just they, they are, they think they could do whatever they want. I mean, if it wasn't for WikiLeaks, we would have no proof of the illegal happenings. If it wasn't for uh, Viteris, we wouldn't have video of it, it, we wouldn't have proof of the the, the um, tampering with these elections that they're doing. Real quick on the WikiLeaks, um, they released more Podesta emails today. They thought they were going to silence. It doesn't look like. Just because they shut down the email for Julian Assar doesn't mean that they're um, going to shut down leaks. It's... From my understanding, Julia Sag is just uh, um, the face of WikiLeaks. All these documents are spread all over, and they got a dead man switch, quote unquote, set up. So if something happens to Sag, it will trigger release of massive information. I, I mean, I just four hours ago they released these new WikiLeaks and it or um, uh, Asag emails. Podesta. Oh my God, I'm getting names all confused. Um, it, it's just. It's, it's, all right, let's get back to the articles and stop dwelling on this corruption that's going on, because it's just going to drive everybody nuts. 
Herman Cain. Uh, um, listen, I, I don't know a lot about the guy. Um, I know some basics. And uh, he he put out an article that he understands what Trump is going through with these allegations. He's been there, and he as he puts it, he smells a rat with the allegations. And as he puts it, the familiar pattern of deception. This all feels so familiar. I've gotten over it, but I'll never forget it. It was November 2011. I was leading the poll and Republican nomination race. My 999 tax play was attracting national attention and interest in my candidacy was at its height. Then came the women. I won't recount all their names or their claims here because they don't deserve the attention. If you really want to read about it in the details, along with my detailed refutation of every allegation made against me, knock yourself out. But there are some patterns I notice about what's happening to Donald Trump. And they are the kinds of things that make me smell a rat. An obvious one is the timing. Trump has been running for president for more than a year. When he was cruising to the nomination, these women could have come forward. When the race tightened a few weeks ago and many polls showed Trump surging in the lead, they could have come forward. But instead, it all happening just a week after the infamous tape of his comments 11 years ago. It's almost too perfect, wouldn't you say? As if someone coordinated the whole thing. It's the same thing that happened to me as soon as I started scaring the living daylights out of the establishment by surging into first place in the polls. Here comes the steady streams of accusations and innuendos. Just when you thought you'd put one away, another one surfaced. It was like playing whack-a-mole. It got to the point where the whole thing was impossible to manage because you never knew when the next one might be coming or from who. Another thing that feels familiar about this is how unfalsifiable the accusations are. A woman claims you said a certain thing or touched her in a certain way or made a certain kind of proposition. There was one woman who claimed I had done something while sitting alone in with her in a car I hadn't but how can you prove that something didn't happen you can go through every minute of your life or her life and prove you were never in a place or with a person or that you never ever did a certain thing you can assist all day and all night that it never happened but people who want to believe it did and will believe it did you can never prove your innocence also, I noticed that in a at least one case, an alleged victim was it, it, yeah, it was silent at the time the incident supposedly happened. People Magazine reporter Natasha Steve, Steinoff was not a powerless nobody at the time. She claims Trump acted inappropriately towards her, yet she simply wrote her feature story and said nothing to anyone only to show up now years later with the accusation no one can prove or disprove i faced the same thing if i had really done the things i was accused of doing it would make sense that someone would have spoken up at a at the time instead at the time when i was in the spotlight and vulnerable here they come here is one other commonality like trump when i was accused women who knew me well and had worked with me for years came forward and testified that I had always been professional and appropriate in their dealings with me. Female associates of Donald Trump's have done the same thing. And yet in both cases, the media gave more credence to women who barely knew the men they were accusing while giving almost no credence to all those who knew us well and worked with us on a regular basis. So when you look at the timing the unfalsifiable nature of the accusation, the strange silence of the accusers for years, the erroneous uh, ignored support of women who really know the people in question, you can't help but recognize that the same phenomena is repeating itself again. I wasn't there when these allegation incidents allegedly happened with Donald Trump, so I can't say definitely what's true and what's not true. But I know for a fact that none of the accusations accusations against me were true 
And I was very much there to see the smear campaign against me unfold in exactly the same way it's unfolding against him. Oh, by the way, I can't help but note that all this came out at the perfect time for the media to obsess over and ignore the steady stream of WikiLeaks releases that basically prove every allegation against Hillary Clinton has been true. That's some coincidence, don't you think? So that's why I smell a rat in this stream of accusations against Donald Trump. It's all just a little too perfect and feels awfully familiar in a stomach-wrenching sort of way. You are being manipulated into voting for Hillary Clinton. It's a very sophisticated campaign of manipulation. I've seen it before. Don't let them fool you. And that was Herman Cain. He's gone through this. And this, as I said, is a tactic. That. That um, they use time and time again. It's the same playbook. So um, I don't believe a single one of these accusations. I I honestly believe this. These women just ruined their lives for what? Hillary Clinton. They just ruined their lives. People are not falling for the same shit. The problem is, and I've said it, it's uh, the Democrats have gone to the same play too many times and expecting to win the Super Bowl. Now, they didn't... The other thing that makes me go, hmm, is why would you, if you're in such a massive lead, if you got a, such a massive lead, Why would you risk? Why would you risk hurting your campaign to throw these stories out there? I don't recall in 2008 or 2012 where they had to resort to these types of tactics during the presidential run. Obama had a pretty good lead at those points. And they didn't have to resort to these tactics. And like I said, they've used this stuff, but it's not always on the presidential. They use it on the state level, federal level. But why would you risk, if you're in the lead, why would you risk doing this? Because she's not in the lead. Plain and simple. These polls have been debunked. And I honestly believe, and I know for very good from very good sources that well, I know for a fact that these um, campaigns get the true polls numbers. They do stuff themselves, and they're seeing poll numbers, and they know better. And that would be, you know, if Trump's in the lead, that would be a good reason for him to be pointing out that the media is, uh, and the elections are rigged with all the media coverage that he's getting and compared to what the real polls are showing that would explain why Hillary Clinton is taking risks and you know acts of desperation on her part would explain if she's behind she's got to start throwing the kitchen sink to try to catch up try to hurt his campaign and I, I, I that makes sense But I 
more emails are being released and um Podesta basically was emailing with uh George Soro and uh talking about to make sure to manipulate women and minorities to keep them on their side. It just I'm trying to stop the comments with the lesson of the head is a truly big way to miss all the danger. Now, someone wrote that uh, WikiLeaks waiting this long. They've said that they have some, um, and I, I'm not holding my breath on it, but I understand their uh, idea with the WikiLeaks. They are. Oh, well, this person tweeted that uh, stop counting on WikiLeaks to win the election. I don't think anybody's actually counting on that. If they had anything truly big, waiting this long would be dangerous and stupid. They don't. Um, no. Uh, it's been said that they're holding off closer to the election to release, so it's fresher in the people's mind. Because if you release it too soon, people will forget about it. Um, that's modern society. So if you have something really big, you hold off closer to the election um so i think this uh accusation of the women desperate as it is i i i think they uh released it too soon so i mean and it's opinions hey, that person has a right to their opinion and i'm not mocking them just uh, just responding Oh, now the Democrats are trying to say, amazingly, they have Julian Assange's financial records, and he's a pedophile, and he's taken $1 million from Russia, and give me a fucking break. You can see the, the, the hit pieces that they're trying. And anybody that falls for it is either A, a paid troll, or B, a mindless drone. Think for yourself, people. Think for yourself. Look at everything going on. Just don't look at the information. Look at everything going on. And, and it pisses me off that the Democrats are throwing a hissy fit now because it's about them. But they weren't upset when it was leaking information about the Republicans and when they were leaking information against Bush because they sure as hell was quoting those documents back then. They loved it. Piss me off. They're not just going after... Let's see. Uh, back in 2009, the secret congressional reports. Um, Syrian files. Uh, spy files. Uh, German... Uh, the CIA, uh, the CIA director John Brennan, um, CIA files, Saudi cables, um, let's see, uh, U.S. military equipment in Afghanistan. U.S. military in Iraq, collateral murder, Guantanamo files, detainee policies, Iraq war logs, Afghan war logs. Um, I mean, it's not just, this is more than just um, DNC. They, they go... 
a large spread across the board. So, sitting there crying about it shows me that uh, you're trying to deflect from the actual conversation, which makes me then want to look into the information even more. So, Hillary Clinton also just recently threw a hissy fit. Um, Hang on, uh. There's WikiLeaks documents now um, from Ben Edwards to John Podesta, who's threatening that if uh, anybody but Hillary makes the White House, that they're going to have a revolution started on their hands. So basically, the Democrats are threatening if uh, they don't make it, they're going to start a war, civil war in the United States. I've heard that very often, and it fits their mentality. This past Friday morning, uh, uh, as I talked about, a Connecticut Supreme Court judge struck down the Sandy Hook family's lawsuit. Well, Hillary Clinton is showing how incompetent she really is. She said it's incomprehensible that a gun manufacturer aren't held liable for misuse of stolen guns. Hey, Kel. They're not being, the gun manufacturers aren't responsible for stolen guns. Is Ford responsible for stolen cars? Is um, IBM responsible for hacked emails? Is Microsoft held responsible for hacked emails? It's it shows how anti-gun she is. She don't care about the facts. She don't care that there's already a law in place protecting gun manufacturers from people looking to do harm. It's ridiculous. What happened at Sandy Hook is is disgusting. Adam Lanza had problems. He killed his mother and took her guns. You can come up with all the fucking laws you want. That's not going to stop someone who's dead set that they're willing to murder their mother to commit their heinous activity. There's not a law that's going to stop these people. But what you're doing is disarming law-abiding citizens, period. How many times we have to go over this conversation, I don't know. But I'll keep going over it and over it and over it and over it. You're listening to the Reverb Common Sense right here on SHR Media, High Plains Pundit Radio, ICRN Network, Red Nation Rising Radio, YouTube Speaker, and iTunes. We will be right back. Listening to the SHR Media Network. 
Now, for our males, we know you may have only one shot to harvest that trophy, so we have thousands of accessories and replacement parts to improve your chances. We know how much you love to shoot, so our gunsmiths' articles and videos will help you do more and get more out of your guns. We also value your hard work and money. That's why only Brownells backs up everything we sell with a 100% unconditional lifetime guarantee. Brownells, the world's largest supplier of firearm accessories and gunsmithing tools. Breaking news. According to the latest report coming out of SHR Media, a merchandise store to support both the Reaver of Common Sense and SHR Media has just been unleashed to the general public. Be forewarned that this site can be contagious and numerous items can be purchased to support the best news programming. Go to Reaver.one website and click on the store link to check out the merchandise. We were a common sense hosted by my dad, Jersey Joe. Beware, the Jersey Takeover is here. Every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can catch the Rework Common Sense Show hosted by Jersey Joe. Right here on shrmedia.com and highplainsdailynews.com. Only Jersey can deliver hell like no one else. So consider this your fair warning. In a world controlled by corrupt politicians. You got a business. That, you didn't build that. A team of ordinary men emerge from the ashes to give voice to the voiceless and hope to the hopeless. Sackhead Sean. Dude, I'm not saying Kaf was stupid, bro. Sackhead Clint. All good friends of ours usually show, show up drunk. drunk. Also starring Sako as the producer. I'm a little bit drunk, I'm a little bit drunk, cause I'm drinking, drinking, drinking. They are the Sackheads Radio Show. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific on shrmedia.com. Every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can catch the Southside Mutt Show with its host, the Jersey Boys, Jersey Joe and Crash, right here on SHR Media and High Plains Pundit Radio, where we will be digging up the dirt. Times are dark. The people misled by corrupt politicians, lied to by establishment media, and deceived by the false messages of Islam. A nation in confusion needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, High Plains Talk Radio, live rebooting Liberty, and YouTube for a unique brand of commentary on the Unpleasant Blind Guy. Because truth is not always pleasant. If you miss a show, don't worry. You can catch the replays two ways, RebootingLiberty.com or the ReverbCommonSense.com. While you're there on Reverb Common Sense, don't forget, drop in your email and keep up to date with everything going on, or click the like button on the Facebook widget. Now on to the Reverb of Common Sense. This show contains language that some viewers may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. And now on to the show. And welcome back to the Reverb Common Sense. I am your host, Jersey Joe, and I'm making sense out of the senseless. The Jersey Takeover is here. We have expanded to two hours every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
Do you want to support the show? Do you want to support SHR Media? Well, perfect. Go to reverb.one backslash shop. Pick yourself a kick-ass t-shirt. Ah, they're even going international now. Get them while you can. Get them while they're hot. Get your t-shirts. Um, if WikiLeaks is wearing the Clintons down, I guarantee Hillary had to double her IV drip. It's. It's absolutely. Amazing. Uh, all right, let's see. Where are we? Where are we? Oh, does anybody remember when the Clintons left the White House? They had to get them to uh, get back the furniture and a bunch of other stuff that they took from the White House. Yeah, they actually stole furniture from the White House. So now there's FBI documents showing that um, when Hillary Clinton left the State Department, she took lamps and furniture from the State Department to furnish her D.C. residence. Seriously. Uh, um, uh, um, I'm dumbfounded. She went and took furniture again, a second time. She took lamps, lamps. Jesus Christ, I could donate some lamps to her. <laughs> Seems more like a pack rat than a politician. Uh, um. Yeah, she's still. St- it, it, it's the mind numbing that comes from. It, it, it's going to be if she becomes president. We're fucked. The world is fucked. Oh, and uh, Kel, I'm pissed at one of your uh fellow uh. Canadians. Canadian activists have filed a lawsuit to force Canadian Indians to drop Chief Wahoo and their nickname. And what's funny is uh, this past weekend or weekend before, I was talking to my dad. We got talking about the Redskins, and he's like, "Why aren't they going after um the Cleveland Indians?" And we kind of laughed about it. And then I come across this article, and I'm just I, I just start laughing because it, it's it, <laughs> yeah, we'll give her some broken furniture. <laughs> uh, Kel says she has a sofa that uh, Hillary Clinton has. And it has springs popping through, but they'll give her a tickle. And you know I was joking, Kel, about blank, you know the whole Canadian thing. It's just I find it funny that uh, the ALC, AL, yeah, the ALC uh, series is being played in Toronto, and um, a gentleman, an Indian activist, Douglas Cardinal, filed suit in Canadian court to force a countrywide ban on the Cleveland Indians' name and their decade-old Chief Wahoo logo. 
Well, first, I, I'm offended that his last name is Cardinal. That offends me. That, that, that's insulting birds. He's mocking birds. He's a mockingbird. But I'm bumped. Uh, the, the Indians are set to take on the Toronto Blue, James, Blue Jays in game three of the ALC. S. But if this activist has his way, <laughs> the, the um, Cleveland Indians will be barred from wearing their uniform or calling themselves by the team's name they played under since 1915. 1915, they've gone by the Cleveland Indians. Uh, 1915 people. It uh, makes my head hurt. Um, and I joke about, you know, when I say kind of like the Cal about the Canadian, there's Americans that do it. We got the idiots with the red skins. It's like, get, you have nothing else in your life to do that you got to pull this shit. In 1915. 101 years later, 101 years later. And... Did this guy get some, like, sand on his tampon? Are, are the Cleveland Indians beating um, the Blue Jays right now? I, I, is this just trying to be revenge for... His team's losing? Get over it, people. Indians lead the series three to nothing. Three to nothing. They're beating Toronto. So that explains why this guy wants him banned. I hope to God the courts throw it out. For number one, it's an American company. It's an American company. Fuck off. Change your tampon. Make sure there's no sand on it next time and go on your merry way. Douglas. I know I'll probably get some hate mail from women. I found that offensive. Oh my god! Would it be better if I asked what uh, who lit the string on his tampon? Would that be better? Um, I'm not even making fun of women. I'm making fun of a guy. I can do that. I'm a guy. I can make fun of another guy. The team's name and logo are demeaning and offensive. 101 years later, nobody's fucking complained, and now it's demeaning and offensive. Jesus Christ, people. And, and it, it, the bombing of a local GOP headquarters. Still pissing me off. The left excuse for it all is to blame it on Trump. It's Trump's fault. Um, this goes to the violence and depravity, and the low, disgusting tactics of the left. For number one, they're blaming the victims, making excuses for those who done this terroristic attack. They're trying to intimidate voters. There's your true voter intimidation, not voter ID cards. This is true intimidation. But they ignore this and want to talk about voter ID cards. It's, oh my God, I just. I, 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 I don't know. Uh, it's. If Hillary wins this election, 2017 will be remembered as the year America lost its independence. Hmm. Uh, 
uh, we, we, I don't know. We're in bad shape, people. The world is in bad shape. Not just America. The world is in bad shape. And America has been leading the charge. Uh, what are we going to do? The intimidation, the tactics, it's all, all disgusting. Go back to WikiLeaks for a little bit. Um, Five major foreign policies revealed from WikiLeaks Clinton email dump. Uh, as the emails hacked from the accounts of Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta continues to trickle into the public eye, major revelations regarding Hillary Clinton's policy preferences on handling foreign policies, particularly rogue states, have come to uh, to the front. Uh, Clinton on Israel-Palestine talks. Um, they say that the Potumkin process is better than nothing, as with almost every major Democrat figure, Clinton thinks the solution to the Palestine problem involves manipulating and pressuring Israel. However, emails produced by WikiLeaks suggest Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu feels Clinton is more instinctively sympathetic to Israel than the White House. And the worst moment in his relationship with her came when she was heavily scripted and reading from points prepared by the White House. <clears throat> That's funny because uh, Obama and his defenders say loudly that um, we're best friends with Israel. Clinton just loves Cuba. It is clear that Clinton will be useful to special interests that want to make money in Cuba and enrich the dictatorship in return. That one still has me floored. Uh, sanctions. And then we put sanctions against countries, and they never changed, so we lifted the restrictions. They got... Uh, these people got rewarded for doing nothing. Drives me up a wall. Absolutely up a wall. The project for progressive Islam. The most interesting thing about this leaked email is that Clinton's inner circle and their connection in the Islamic world think progressive Islam is necessary. They think that the um, anti-Muslim backlash is worse than and more of the threat than terrorism. Foreign governor donors, all the money is in. Does anyone really doubt all the foreign money pouring into the Clinton Foundation is going to have a profound impact on American foreign policy if Hillary Clinton gets into the White House? Jesus, people do not give up millions of dollars like they are out of the kindness of the heart. You don't give up $25 million and not expect anything in return. And if you think that Saudi Arabia is giving $25 million to Hillary Clinton and do not expect anything in return, God, are you gullible. Because, hell, if they're going to give money away, hell, I don't even want $25 million. A million, half a million I'd even be happy with. Hell, a thousand dollars I would be happy with right now. <sighs> Hillary said in a Goldman Sachs interview that Iran could only be contained by bombing their nuclear facilities. That Iran should be made to feel more pain by not in any way occupying or evading them, but by bombing their facilities. 
painless aerial bombardment is the Democrats' favorite foreign policy tool, along with supplying weapons to local fighters who will serve as America's deniability, easily abandoned boots on the ground. Neither of these strategies work very well. Ever. They haven't worked. God, it, 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 it. And again, where is Hillary? Pulling up her schedule again. Um, oh, that was nice. I put, typed in Hillary Clinton's uh, schedule and first popped up Hillary Clinton's website, then popped up Reverb.1. Sweet. Um... Okay, the 18th, which is today, there is one, two, three, four, five, six rallies. No, um, one, two, three rallies scheduled. Three fundraisers scheduled for today. Um, at the Economical Speech in Detroit, you have Tim Kaine and Ann Holton. And Blue Bell, Pennsylvania, you have Bill Clinton. Flagstaff, Arizona. You have Bernie Sanders. Now for the fundraisers, Padima Laksimi, uh, Moby, and Marlon Marshall. Um, no, Hillary. Of course, tomorrow is the debate. You have Hillary Clinton scheduled. You also have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11 events, a lot of them are um, early vote events, uh, discussion on bullying in schools, uh, debate watch parties, and let's see, we have uh, Hillary Clinton at the debate, Tim Kaine at Canvas Kickoff, Tim Kaine early vote rally that's in Ohio and North Carolina he's scheduled for. Bernie Sanders for a rally in Nevada. Um, Chelsea Clinton get out the vote rally in Temple, Arizona. Discussion on bullying in schools. That's Ann Holton. That's in uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Then she'll be going to Otoma, Iowa. Early vote event. Burlington, Iowa. Early voting event. And then Davenport, Iowa for a debate watch party. That's all Ann Holton. Again, this is all happening on Wednesday. Then you have a De New York City debate watch party fundraiser. Uh, Dick or David N. Dinkins and Mick. And you also have a fundraiser, debate watch party fundraiser, the Jewish community for Hillary. That's in Newton, Massachusetts. And then for the 20th, you have one, two, three, four, five events. Two of them are Tim Kaine, uh, President Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, and Joe Biden. It, it, I, there is nothing scheduled for Hillary for the rest of the month. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve fundraisers between now and the end of the month. Uh, and one of those fundraisers is in London, UK. But again, there's nothing for Hillary. Nothing. Where is she? So, okay, uh, she's taking some time off before the debate for tomorrow night so she can memorize her lines. Um, they got a programmer that takes a day or two for the programming to take effect. But where is she for the next half month?
And honestly, my opinion is they're hiding her because of the WikiLeaks. She's not able to think on her feet, not because she's a female, because the only thing she is is a robot that repeats what she's told to say. After the information that I found out, I am more... um, I am 100% positive that with that she's behind in the polls. So they, they're they hiding her to just try to control damage in hopes of Trump just screwing up. It's President Obama is going to be in Beverly Hills for one of the fundraisers. Let's see which one is it. Uh, or it may have happened already. $33,400 per ticket fundraisers. Holy shnikes. Um, Her, her biggest area to date for the United States is going through uh, California to raise money. So they're going to they're going to sap that area dry. Um, it's just they have her hidden. They're hiding her. Because when she goes out and speaks, she's hurting herself. She looks angry. Why am I not 50 points? At- Seriously, who does a commercial like that and thinks it's a good idea? to whine that they're not ahead in the polls. Oh, my God. I don't know. It's the distractions. They're trying to uh, ignore the WikiLeaks and hoping that will go away. And uh, this one's really got me going, oh, shit. Now, one of the WikiLeaks documents showed that the Democrats have been working with these companies that do redistricting maps and that they are, they, they are in cahoots with them and that the, they're going to redistrict to put it in Democrat favor and that and they admit that this is what's going on. So Obama and Eric Holder have launched a super PAC for fairer redistricting maps. And this is part of the plan that was in that leaked email that they're going to be doing this, pushing for redistricting of all states. And they got, you know, people in the states working on it already so that they can redo the maps so that the Democrats can start winning every election. This is not theory. This is not tinfoil hat this is what's going on people they are trying to rig the elections plain and simple this is not donald trump oh no no it is actually happened they are trying to rig elections go to one. watch that video again it shows how they're trying to rig the elections it shows how they're trying to intimidate voters With that, I want to say uh, thank you for being here today. It's a joy. I will be here tomorrow, of course, 11 to 1. And uh, tomorrow night is the Reaver of Common Sense, or excuse me, Southside Much. So with the Jersey Boys, Jersey Joe and Crash, as always, uh, we will be uh, making fun of everything we can and definitely making fun of each other, as always. Um, Try to make it. That's 8, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on SHR Media. Uh, Till tomorrow, people. Have a great day. You've been listening to The Reaver of Common Sense with its host, Jersey Joe. You can tune in every day, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time 
right here on hbpundit.com and shrmedia.com.